Today, my guest is Jens Nielsen. Jens is a multifamily investor and uh, syndicator, and we are going to speak with him about that, as well as how to change your mindset from an employee to an entrepreneur. But first, a quick reminder, if you like the show, CREPN Radio, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You can like, share, and subscribe, and as always, leave a comment. We love to hear from our listeners. Also, if you want to see how handsome our guests are, be sure to check out our YouTube channel, Commercial Real Estate Pro Network. With that, I want to welcome my guest, Jens. Welcome to CREPN Radio. Hey, thanks, Darian. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our talk today. Uh, before we uh, hit the record button, I, I felt like we have a, uh, this is going to be a dynamite show, and I think people are going to get a lot of uh, value out of it. And um, We'll, uh, we'll get into it. But before we get started, if you could just take a minute and share with the listeners a little bit about your background, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, so I mean, as people can probably hear from my accent and from my name, I'm not a, I'm not, I wasn't born in this country. I'm actually from Denmark. Um, I left Denmark uh, quite a while ago, 1994, a young man, and I, I was like kind of a you know, hungry for adventure and whatever. And I ended up moving to London, England in the 1994. And I came from a small town in Denmark to a large city. It was a huge shift and just kind of learning English and getting more comfortable with the language and all. So that was kind of crazy. And then uh, shortly thereafter, I made the move to the United States in 1996. Um, started out on the East Coast, you know, and followed the traditional the traditional path that you are taught to do, right? Got, went to, I, had, I didn't have a college degree when I first came here, so I went to school, got my undergrad, and got my master's at the uh, University of Maryland. And, you know, followed a path of just being a good employee. I worked for somebody else and, you know, earned my paycheck and put some money away in my 401k because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. And everybody else I knew was doing that. And, uh, and that was, you know, great for many years, so, you know, good income and, and savings. Um, in the meanwhile, you know, got married, and then we decided that we wanted to move west. So um, uh, in 2012, we moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, kind of fell in love with the, with the southwest, the sun, and the endless skies, and the, the fewer crowds <laughs> compared to like the East Coast. Um, lived there for a while, and then actually got the opportunity to get a job in Durango, Colorado. It's you told me in the before we started recording, you had actually gone through there to through that town and to Mesa Verde, which is just a wonderful area of the part of the country. Um, I've been here the last seven years and uh, just kind of a few years ago, I was, I started having this idea like, well, it's great to have a job. It's great to save money in your 401k, but you are working on somebody else's dream. And if you stop working tomorrow, the money stops coming. And I say, I got to do something different. I got to find a way to create some passive income to secure my retirement in different ways and to really just create a, a financial security for me and my family. And multifamily investing was kind of the thing that uh, after researching everything else, everything just looked like a job. Multifamily investing, I was like, oh, this is the one thing we can actually put money in and, and, and enjoy passive cash flow. It's not truly passive. We can get into that, but it felt like that was the one avenue or path that I felt passionate about. I felt like I could could help uh, achieve some of these goals. So that's kind of, you know, in a few minutes, the, my, my story, you know, and uh, we can certainly dig into some of that um, in more detail. Yeah, no, I, I, I love your, uh, your, your path there. It certainly sounds like you, uh, you, uh, you know, hit all the, uh, I guess the international spots. I mean, starting in London, <laughs> that's quite the, uh, the baptism into a big season. <laughs> And uh, English, uh, and then uh, East Coast, and then uh, you found your way out west. Um, so let me ask you. So uh, in in my notes here, I've got that you are you're invested in over six hundred units uh, in the last uh, six years. Uh, you just so literally, you just got started in in about seven years ago. Is that what I and actually even less than that? It was more okay. like three and a half years ago, actually. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, it was, it was quite, um, you know, I, what I did. So, uh, you know, when I started investigating, what are some great ways to, to achieve uh, passive income and, and, you know, grow your, your wealth, 
I, I, I stumbled upon real estate and I immediately took a bunch of action, right? I would listen to the podcast, I would read the books and I would just get super interested in it. And then it didn't take long before. I'd kind of been unhappy about my, the performance of my stock portfolio and I had some, you know, money, I had money in my you know, retirement accounts, IRAs, I had money in a taxable account. And I was like, the person that makes money here every month is my broker. <laughs> sometimes I make money, sometimes I lose a bunch of money. My broker makes money every month and I was kind of tired of that. So I, uh, I decided to do, take kind of two paths. I would, I learned about a self-directed IRA, which was one, one avenue. And I also, so I started moving money into a self-directed IRA, which is a, a vehicle you can use to invest in, in real estate and, uh, and other things. And I said, okay, let me invest in some of these syndications. So I started to actually basically putting money, money in passively into, um, in the syndications, uh, also node funds and other private private placements. And at the same time, I said, okay, I have some money sitting in the stock market. Let me sell some stocks and put it into uh, to some real estate. And I connected with them. Um, I said, who do I know that's already doing this? So I connected with a good friend I have here in Durango through uh, my other big passion, which is cycling. That's a different story. Connected with him and he... Um, I decided that you know Albuquerque was uh, sorry Durango was not the greatest cash flow markets are super expensive here so I think where can I go to um, to find uh, more reasonably priced properties and I went and I, I connected with my good friend here and I said you know what what ideas do you have around this and he said nah I used he used to live in Albuquerque well so so did I. Um, Go down there, prices are much more reasonable. Just go and connect with this this one broker friend of mine. Go there and um, and connect with him and see, you know, he can probably help you get a fourplex. And that was kind of the initial conversation. And one a really powerful question that I asked him that I really encourage everybody to think about is anybody anytime you connect with somebody, ask that person, who do you know that I should know? And that makes people think. Uh, who can they connect you with? And that was a really powerful question for me and a way to, uh, to get, uh, get some referrals. No, I love that. That's kind of an open-ended, uh, you know, way to kind of wrap up a conversation. I'm, I'm guessing that it kind of causes the, uh, the other party to really think, you know, as opposed to, yeah, we'll get together, <clears throat> you know, see you next time. Or I mean, there's, there's that, that kind of a pause and, and really make them think. And I'm sure it makes you stand out too. Uh, but that's, that's, an, that's a great tip uh, for somebody. I mean, for anybody uh, just uh, to, to ask that and then have the other party think, cause you're not asking for, you know, you're not asking, to, you're not asking for them to give you something as much as like, you know, now that we've gotten to know each other, who do you, who do you think that I should know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and also, you know, you end you end the conversation with some sort of action item. That's not, yeah, you're right. You're not asking them for something, you know, uh, or it's more like, well, maybe I can connect. And this is actually something I practice a lot. Now, every time I talk to somebody, I was like, who do I know in my network that I can connect them with? And I really try to make an effort around just connecting people because that idea of abundance and just sharing. Because I think this business, it's not that big of a business. And I think the more we can connect with each other, the more we can help each other, the better it is for everybody. So that's, um, that's one of the, kind of my, my, my philosophies is just to connect as many people as I can. And, uh, and I'm just kind of growing my, my list of connections throughout the country. And that's been a pretty awesome way of um, helping out people. Well, and I think if, uh, if I'm hearing you right, the, the action part on that of actually connecting people doing an introduction and, and uh, you know, making it more of an introduction as opposed to just a connection on LinkedIn or, you know, Facebook or some random, you know, oh, you're connected to them. I'll connect with you too. Kind of thing. But that active uh, introduction and, and having put the thought into the, the why these two people would be, um, you know, possibly a good match uh, would, would uh, go a long ways. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, you know, because we really, uh, yes, what was it? Uh, oh, yesterday I spoke to somebody who, um, who was doing some, uh, uh, he does a lot of um, like wholesaling. It's not exactly what I'm doing, but just to give an example, he's doing uh, single family wholesaling and he does all these promotions around. So like I said, well, I know somebody in that same market as you who's doing something similar on Facebook 
and and uh, and social media lead generation. So I put those guys in touch, and maybe they can work together to do something. There's nothing in it for me except just connecting those people, you know, and uh, hopefully they can they remember me next time they they have something that I can help them with and they can help me with, and that's kind of my philosophy around that. So it's been right. it's been great. So, so you, you started out uh, doing more like the passive. Now you're in, in New Mexico and did you, did you buy something? Have you actively uh, purchased something on your own? Yeah, so basically, uh, sorry, I kind of got on a tangent here, but yeah, so after I connected with that broker down in Albuquerque, uh, very quickly we bought, um, we bought a couple of fourplexes and 11 units uh, apartment complex in Albuquerque and that was actually 2000 and 2006 um, so 2016 so it has only really been a little over three years right um, these were kind of class C C minus properties I felt like you know and this is maybe we can get into that what are some of the mistakes that new investors do but anyway they were inexpensive and and my broker who was also a property manager felt like, hey, this, this makes sense. I did my own, own underwriting and on the paper, they made a lot of sense. You know, the purchase price were in like the mid 150s and um, a little bit of uh, repairs and required. And um, it's like, oh, this, this sounds awesome. Um, so those were the first like 19 units we bought within um, just within a six month period. So really it's like, let's take action. Let's see where this goes. Let's put my own money into it and then take all the risk just me and my wife, essentially, there was nobody else involved in that, right? So we'll just see how this goes and get the experience and, um, and just get that credibility around that. Um, while at the same time, I was doing the syndications through my passive, my passive um, investment through my, my self-directed IRA and so forth. Um, you know, so then that those 19 units, I kind of grew. And then at the same time, I started thinking, how can I, this is pretty awesome. I want to grow bigger because, you know, you start hearing about syndication, you are hearing about how can you, how can you partner with people and everything. So I, I quickly started that kind of a conversation with people I would meet, you know, on my cycling trips or, you know, hang out with friends. I said, Hey, I'm starting investing in real estate. Have you ever find a deal that makes sense that, you know, we can partner on, would you be interested? And I think a lot of people come now and ask me, you know, how do you connect with investors? And I said, that doesn't start the day you need money. It starts years in advance, right? Create that list, create that excitement around real estate, explain why you are doing it, why it makes sense for other people to do it, and then start creating that, that list of investors. So that's what I did, you know, three years ago, starting creating that list, starting having coffee, salons, uh, dinners with people, and then just adding them to my list of investors and having those conversations. So, um, you, th that's that's a huge point there, <clears throat> um, and I think that um, you know it's always been a question for people in or getting into real estate. You know, chicken or the egg, uh, property or the investor or a property of the money, um, and you know sometimes you'll hear just go find the deal. There's plenty of money out there. Uh, well, that may be the case, but if, if you don't have the the money lined up, you're going to be you know working with somebody else and and uh, you know, you're probably going to not, not get all that you might have gotten out of the deal. But, but uh, in any case, I, lo I love the emphasis there on, you know, the, the uh, you know, networking and, and trying to establish your, your uh, credibility and also kind of the mindset of, of um, you know, those you engage so that they think of you as that, that guy that does real estate. Uh, and, you know, and I, I think I've heard it said before, and I, I think this kind of plays in here too, is that, you know, as you continue to have these conversations, you're essentially educating and bringing these people along with you. So it's not a surprise attack or a surprise when you, you do have a deal and you are able to, uh, you know, invite investors to participate. Uh, they've been kind of anticipating that moment, you know, all along because of you've been, you know, bringing them along. So Yeah, absolutely. You know, I couldn't be, I couldn't be Jens, the IT professional, and say, hey, do you want to invest in my real estate deal? They'd be like, what? <laughs> so you have to create, you know, and now every time I, if I go and I meet new people, I'm Jens, the real estate investor with a full-time job on the side, right? <laughs> but, the, uh, but just, you got to present yourself as who you want to be in the future than who you were in the past, and then get people excited about that vision you're trying to build, right? 
um, and, uh, and, and to explain the benefits, why it makes sense for them. It's not about you and whatever benefit you're going to get. It's about how does it make sense for somebody in a high net worth, a high net worth, a high income bracket? How, why does it make sense for them to invest in real estate? How can you help them do it? And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to deal with tenants and toilets and trash and all those things, right? And managing us. Like, no, I, that's not fun. But the way we structure these deals, you don't have to do that. You just have to become a passive investor with us and we will take care of all that. So those conversations, I had those, you know, years ago. Um, started creating my mailing list, tried to add people to my list, trying to create newsletters. You know, and my newsletters starting out didn't have a lot of content in there. But then, then actually, you know, just kind of maybe going back to what the story was, then uh, in, in 2018, so we got actually, I bought a, um, a 38 unit property with my, that same broker um, and a couple of uh, uh, joint venture partners. So we actually were able to find this kind of rundown deal in Albuquerque, rundown, we were able to get 38 units at for $1.2 million. It needed a lot of work. So we kind of repositioned that. But at that time I already had those conversations. So it was like fairly easy I don't say it's easy, but people were receptive to the idea of partnering with us on this deal and bringing some capital to it and, and, and take it, take part of that upside of, of repositioning this, this asset. So that was kind of my first foray into, um, into doing a, um, you know, something with partners that wasn't just my own money at risk there. Right. Which, which brings on a whole nother set of, of uh, responsibility for sure. Right. To, to do that. So. No, I, you, uh, I mean, you, you totally, um, jumped from, you know, the fourplex guy doing it on your own to now you've, you've raised capital, you've, uh, brought investors in and, and, uh, do, do you consider that a quote syndication or is that more of a joint venture or how, how do you structure that? One? This is more a joint venture, you know, okay. um, you know, we partnered and then people have roles in the deal and so forth, you know, and, uh, this is important for people to understand what the difference is between a joint venture and a syndication, right? Uh, syndication, you're taking passive investors that have no day-to-day -day involvement in the operation, whereas a joint venture, everybody has some, some active role. So it was five of us that went in on it. And, um, and that's been, you know, going. Uh, so we've been working on that for the last little over a year now, reha rehabbing and increasing rents and really improving, improving that property. So that's been, a great experience and also credibility there and said, Hey, we took this kind of worn out <laughs> rundown deal and really, you know, did heavy lift on it. So there's been a lot of great uh, learning from that for sure. No, I, I, I love the progression. I think that it, 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 it does a couple of things. One, it lends to your credibility. Um, you know, it's not like, uh, not only were you yesterday, the IT guy, but now you're coming to me about a real estate thing. Like what? Um, <laughs> But you've, you know, you've been talking to people all along and your story continues to build in that A, you know, you started out with just you and your wife. Now you're doing some joint venture and you're getting bigger. And so it just continues to lend and, and your, your story of success, uh, your, your credibility will just continue to grow with that. And uh, uh, that's awesome. Um, so, and you said that was just what, six months ago? No, that was uh, May May of uh, twenty eighteen. Yeah. So about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Yeah. So a year uh, with thirty eight units, you say it was kind of in rough shape. I um, mean, the purchase price sounds pretty attractive, but I'm assuming, like you said, there was a lot of work. How, what was your capital improvement budget for that? It was six hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, but <laughs> I mean, literally, this was not a this was a heavy value add. So essentially, what we did was. You know, in in the Southwest, a lot of flat roofs, just kind of stucco on the outside. So roofs, we typically just go in and replace the roof right, you know, up front so we don't have leaks or anything like that. And then um, after that, um, re stuccoed the outside, redid all the deck. It's kind of a two-story almost, um, but you, it almost looks like a motel from the outside, you know, two-story exterior walkways. They block... Like, Block construction or uh, just frame, frame and frame. stucco. Okay. All right. Um, so new stucco on there. Redid the decking because that was about to fall down. As you know, as an insurance person, you probably would have been 
<laughs> not very pleased to see how it looked in the past. So we went in there and read it all bad. Um, and then we basically just been taking, we've done it in kind of a slow approach where as the units went vacant, we would go in there and fix them up. But new flooring, new kitchen, fix some plumbing issues and everything else. So it's, it's a lot of money. I mean, it's 10, 12 grand the door plus the exterior rehab and so forth. But also, you know, it's so good to go there and see how, you know, the tenant class is improving. We don't have as many delinquencies. We can raise the rents. And just, you know, it's just a great looking property and it's continued to improve. So it's been, it's been, um, it's been a great project in that, in that regard. But also another thing that I kind of, I thought I'd just mention, you know, everybody talks about, oh, there's low unemployment in the U S and stuff. And that's great. If you're, if you're, uh, you know, a worker or want to have a job, but if you're trying to find, um, contractors and people to work for you. It's actually a challenge these days. And we've run into that where people get on the job, start the job, and then they could make $5 more an hour somewhere else and they would leave. And we're like, ah. So that's actually been a challenge for us to find, do rehabs in a reasonable fashion, a reasonable time. I've, I've, and I've noticed other people struggling with that as well. So that's, uh, that's the other side of the coin with that employment picture we have right now. No, I, I have, uh, learned kind of sounds a lesson you, you're, uh, you know, singing there. The, uh, if I have people that do work, I mean, the first thing I do is make sure I get them paid ASAP, uh, because I want them to know that I will pay them, uh, on time as agreed. And, and I want them to come back and remember me when, you know, the need arises kind of thing. Cause it's, finding good people is tough, period. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care what line of work you're, you're dealing with. Absolutely. So, <laughs> um, so, so l let me ask you. So, a, a year ago, you 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 add the thirty eight. Um, tell me what, what's happened here in the last year. <laughs> yeah. So, a couple other things, right? So, um, actually, I bought a small mobile home park here in in very close to Mesa Verde, actually, that you're familiar with. Just a bit of uh, a friend of mine said, "Oh, I have this deal. You interested?" And I was like, "Oh, I've heard of mobile home parks. Let's try that." We did that, and that's that's kind of just a small little side project him and I are working on. Um, and it's small, it's like nine spots, which I realize is too small, but it's still making good cash flow. Um, and then um, a couple other things, right? So one thing I, I realized is I need to grow my network, both from a investor standpoint, but also from a, a, what do you call it? Like peer level. So what I did, I enrolled in, you know, kind of a, a coaching training program to make sure I, I understood I uh, got trained on all the different uh, aspects of uh, of the business. And also I started going to events to really connect with other people because I'm in a small town and, you know, it's not really easy to connect with people that, that do what you're trying to do. So I enrolled in that coaching program and started going to events and really like connecting with people and, uh, and networking and, and, and growing my network. So, um, what I, you know, I wanted to, so syndication again, I guess, going back to that was one of these, seems like it's the holy grail for a lot of people. They want to do syndication because they can buy large properties with other people's money and, and, and give a good return to, to them and plus make some money themselves. So I connected with, you know, uh, people that are doing syndication because I wanted to get into it. I didn't feel like I had the, maybe it's a limiting belief, but I didn't feel like I had the, um, quite the, uh, what do you call it? enough experience to go out and take a big deal down myself and be the, the key, you know, key principle and something like that. But I felt I could add enough value to other syndicators by, you know, getting on a GP to help with underwriting, help with, help with the uh, due diligence and help with, you know, raising capital on these deals. So I really started saying, you know, who, who are out there that are doing deals that are still kind of up and coming that may need some help in those, in those aspects. And that's what I kind of moved into. Uh, you know, this year, um, and so far this year, I've actually done, uh, you know, help uh, on three different deals, um, starting out with um, an Atlanta deal for 100 and, 100 and 212 units. Um, and then we did a deal in, in Pennsylvania that was 205. And then here uh, in closing in a couple of weeks in, in Phoenix, that's 236 units. So, those three deals just starting out kind of in 
the February March same time frame this year, and uh, so we're able to bring quite a lot of capital, like a million and a half dollars of worth of capital to those deals through that network of investors and so forth that I've built over these last few years. And I was actually <laughs> pleasantly surprised how that how that went, right? <laughs> Well, but I think that, uh, you know, it, it's like anything. People forget how much, how much time and work uh, you've already put into it. I mean, I think that, you know, that you, you've shared your journey all along is uh, kind of what, you know, what has put you in position to have success today. And uh, while you may not have totally understood what the destination was or, you know, how it was going to end up, uh, but you, you continue to kind of, you know, grow your network. And it sounds like you, you've uh, stepped it up even more now that you've uh, joined a, a coaching, uh, you know, platform and you're going to events and that. Uh, do you mind if I ask who, who your coach is? Who are you working with? Yeah, it's Rod Cleef. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, you probably, he's fairly well known. And I think that was probably the best decision that I made was to, you know, it's obviously there's a, there's a, financial commitment to that but also once you make that commitment i think you're going to take you're going to take the action at least i am if i have money on the line i'm going to take the action and feel like oh, i have spent this money i need to do something with that so you know join us it's actually been like two years i was on his podcast uh, a few months ago a month ago and it was it was really cool to reconnect with him and say you know hey this is who i am now versus who i was two years ago when i joined right and we become friends and everything so that's uh, that's pretty cool. But I think, you know, it's, it's great to have that idea. Oh, I want to invest in real estate, but then a lot of people just get stuck because they don't, you know, they don't know what action to take. They don't know. They just don't feel confident to make, go out there and do stuff and they never do anything. It's like, Oh, this is cool, but I'm going to go back to my job. In reality, I felt like, yes, I still have a job and I like my job, but it's not going to be the thing that's going to, fuel me of feed my family for the next 20 years right so i felt like this is the opportunity i have now to go out there put put my money where my mouth is and and, and just get educated and connect with people and just really this has been in a tremendous growth and just going to events and actually be on stage and talking about what we just talked about this idea of if you're gonna raise money start two or three years before you need the money at least there's the process i followed you know just kind of just create credibility around that and that's been it's been awesome growth for me personally. So, no, I love that. And, and even while we uh, kind of introduced the the topic early on about you know the mindset of going from um, an employee to an entrepreneur, um, y you've kind of taken us along that journey of that. It wasn't like a, a leap, like you just said, "Honey, I'm quitting my job," uh, <laughs> right. you know. But you you kind of you 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 realize that you know, th there was more out there and there was more that you wanted. And if you, if you didn't take action, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get there. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, so if, if you look back on it and, and kind of think back as to what was kind of a, a key to that mind shift, can you identify that? I don't know if there was a, no, I think I, I very specifically recall what the, what, 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 um, changed or set me on down this path. I was actually listening to, I think it was the, uh, bigger pockets, how to invest in real, how to invest in rental properties or something like that. I, I downloaded it on audible. And I listened to it. I was like, this is it. I told my wife after I've been walking the dogs and listened to this book, I said, this is what we're going to do. Right. So that was like, kind of like, okay, this is where it just shifted. And then I just started consuming everything I could. Right. Cause I felt like, Hey, here's really something that I can, I can understand. I can wrap my head around and I can start small and then grow it. Right. So that was the, the initial shift, but then, and it was just like a continuous evolution. And I think again, that's important for people to understand you know, you, you look at somebody who in your mind has achieved success and you just see the outcomes like, Oh my God, this guy's, ha this guy has, you know, 10,000 apartment units. There's no way I can ever get there. So I'm not even going to try. Well, that person probably started with a duplex, a fourplex or something. And it's just taking a long time to get there. And you don't see all that hard work over years to get there. You just see the outcome and you just get discouraged because you don't think you can get there. And I think really, 
and I just, I mean, I've really gotten into a lot of these ideas about mindset. I just like the idea of small action every day towards your goal and, you know, never giving up and just don't expect overnight results. Just, just keep working at it, you know, and, and have that idea. You know, I have a routine in the morning where I look at my goals, I write, you know, do some, do some journaling and just kind of keep my, my goals front of mind to make sure that I know where I want to be in six months, a year, five years, 10 years. I never used to do that. This is something new for me and it's just tremendously changed how I approach every day and how I look at my life and understand that I have a responsibility and an ability to achieve the goals that I want. No, I, I love it. Uh, and, and I, I think that, um, you know, mindset is really where it all starts. You know, I, I'm amazed how, how often and, and uh, having, I think mentally shifted years ago about recognizing the value of having others pay me rather than me, um, you know, pay just to live somewhere kind of thing. And we, we've got a handful of rentals. And I just remember, you know, the, my, my earliest mindset or just thought about rentals was that if the thing never went up in value, but the tenant stayed there for, you know, 30 years, that at the end of that, I would have an asset worth you know, whatever the, the, the price of the property was and I didn't pay for it yep. and I might've brought the down payment, but that tenant paid for that house for me. And that was a whole lot better deal than what was going on with my 401k at work. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like you said in the beginning, you know, the, the guy was making the money every, every month was, you know, the broker on that deal. And, uh, so that, that was kind of a mindset to me that just recognized it. But what's interesting to me is how many people, I talk with, and even just, I had coffee with a guy uh, earlier this week and, and we were talking and, and he was telling me about how his in-laws were telling him he needed to get into a bigger house, you know, and he needed, <laughs> he needed to, uh, uh, and he's going, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, this one works perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't cost me more than I need to pay. And I want other people to pay me. I don't want to pay, <laughs> you know, pay for that bigger house, but there's, but there's still this kind of a consumption mindset yeah. of that that, uh, you know, work more hours, uh, get the promotion, get, you know, get a bigger paycheck, spend more money, buy a bigger house. But it's, that's, I, I think that's, that's um, at least what I'm, I'm happy to realize in, in, in uh, talking with real estate investors that get it, uh, that's not the goal. The goal is to have others paying, you know, paying me to live in my, my property. And, uh, you know, my asset grows and my cash flow grows and, uh, you know, I'm not, not beholden to, uh, you know, a job. I mean, financial freedom is really the goal in this whole thing, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that is the goal. And, uh, you know, me and my wife, we know what our freedom number is, because I think it's a Michael Blanc term or something or somebody else just know, Hey, what do we need every month to maintain our current lifestyle? You know, once we reach that number, which won't be too far in the future, reach that number, we don't have to work anymore. I mean, you know, we still probably will choose to do something and then that's, that's to be the scene exactly how, what it's going to look like, but just growing that passive income because we really have no security in our jobs or anything like that. I mean, we're at real employment, right? So, so just growing that. And, and I think a lot of people also has the idea, Oh, entrepreneurship is, is, um, is risky and investing is risky for sure. It's risky, but, you know, you're going to miss hundred percent of the shots you never take what somebody said. And also if you have one source of income, if your job, if your company shuts down tomorrow, you are in trouble. So you really have a lot of risk being with one employee employer. Uh, so that's another kind of thought you, you need to have. Yeah. You can probably get it and go and get a new job, but then you're kind of starting over again and you spend all your energy on that. So uh, yeah. I just love the, I love the mindset thing and, and I've also, you know, done, I started actually help some newer investors in getting in, you know, coaching them and coaching them. How would it take from, from owning nothing to get your first deal? And I'm just seeing some tremendous growth in some of these people, just pushing them beyond their comfort zone to make them take action and everything else. And that's just, it's great to see. Right. So just, uh, uh, right. I love it. I love it. Uh, Jens, if, if we could, uh, I'd like to shift gears here just a second. Uh, as I mentioned to you before we started recording by day, I'm an insurance broker and uh, I work with uh, real estate investors and uh, we, we do a risk assessment and, 
and uh, you know, kind of a risk management strategy uh, session. And and there's there's three strategies that we typically consider. Uh, one is to avoid the risk. Two is minimize the risk. And three is we can transfer the risk, which is what an insurance policy is. And uh, so a few months back, I started asking my guests um, if they could, you know, identify what they see as the biggest risk. And uh, so if you, you are willing, uh, Jens Nielsen, I'd like to ask <laughs> you, what is the biggest risk? Yeah, and I, you know, as we were kind of talking about before we start recording, you know, obviously all those real risks out there that you have to deal with. And I don't think, I don't really necessarily want to go into that. I like to kind of maybe approach it from a more esoteric standpoint um, is that I think the biggest risk that anybody we all have in our lives is not taking action. We are afraid of the unknown. We are afraid of what can possibly go wrong. So we just, stay with what's comfortable in our lives and we just never change we're like oh i'm gonna go to work every day i'm gonna go home i'm just gonna watch tv and i'm gonna go up and do it tomorrow again and if that's all you do your risk is you don't take action you're never going to break out of that and you never grow as a human being and i think if you don't growing you are i don't know dying or whatever you want to call it right so taking action is just the biggest thing yeah you're gonna get your nose bloody you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna you're going to maybe lose some money, but in the end, right, the life is about the journey, about the experiences we have and, and, and moving forward every day. And that's, that's kind of, I think my, that's the biggest risk we all have is not taking, taking action when, we see, when there's an opportunity out there and without seeing the path. The time is never going to be right. There will always be something that, some excuse you can find, but just take action. You know, today is the best day to take any kind of action. So that's, <laughs> that's my answer to that question. I don't know if that's similar to your other answers you've gotten. But. No, I, I, I love, <clears throat> I love the answer. And, and one of the things that I've just really enjoyed in asking the question of, of, uh, you know, guest is that uh, the, the perspective is kind of all over the place, you know, but it's all of it has to deal with risk. And uh, so you know, depending on where you are or where you see things. And I think that, you know, you know, experience probably goes a long ways to uh, changing that. You know, if, if, you've, if you've never been there before and it's the first time you see a problem, it's going to be, you know, you're going to consider it a, a much more significant risk. If you've been there a hundred times and it always looks the same and, and, you know, 99 out of a hundred, you know, you've got kind of a, um, a handful of options that'll that'll uh, you know play out and you've survived all of them eh, you're not going to be as like freaked out about it right absolutely so but no I, I appreciate you you uh you know diving into that and and uh uh you know, like i said i i've just really enjoyed all the answers i've gotten and uh it's definitely i think it's um you know, it, I think one of the things that I, I've, I've come to recognize is that real estate investing is full of risk, period. Sure. You know, uh, whether it be the, the property, the financing, the operations, uh, working with investors, tenants, whatever. Um, but all of it's risk. And, we, and we're managing risk all day, every day, if you're investing. And uh, so anyway, I just appreciate you uh, taking time to, to dive into that. Sure, Absolutely. Uh, Jens, where can the listeners go if they would like to uh, learn more, connect with you? Yeah, so my um, my email is Jens, J-E-N-S, at opendoorscapital.com. So that's uh, opendoors with an S, capital.com. And one thing I like to offer to you, you know, as I mentioned, I like to connect with people and grow my grow my network that way. So if anybody want to get on a call with me, just kind of a quick 20-minute call, they can go to opendoorscapital.com slash call and just schedule a call with me. I take three calls, you know, several times a week and just connect with people all over the country. It's been just a great experience. So opendoorscapital.com slash call is the way to connect with me and get on a call with me. So talk real estate, talk cycling, talk whatever you want to do. I just enjoy that. So Awesome. Well, I'll list all that in the show notes and uh, invite anybody that's uh, interested in connecting with Jens to uh, reach out and do that. And uh, Jens, I want to say thanks for uh, taking the time today. I've uh, enjoyed it immensely, learned a lot, and I hope we can do it again soon. Yeah, thanks. Likewise, Darren. I appreciate it. That was really awesome. 
All right. For our listeners, if you like this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, the more you know, the more you grow. That's all we've got this week. Until next time, thanks for listening. The Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio.